Hey all and welcome! It is season 15 in Nokia Motorsports and with that we have a new but also old license track that we have to go around. We are back on the Hongaro Ring which is a really great opportunity to learn about the car and the track. I chose the Mercedes this time around because it's the car that is least affected by curbs and on the Hungaroring Ring we have to use quite a few of them and additionally I made a setup that makes it really easy to drive the car around its circuit. The car is going to be stable in every potential situation you can be in so it's going to give you a lot of confidence to get your license how does the license work you need to do seven consecutive laps at least which need to be under an average of 149.194 right now this lap time changes when the actual fastest lap recorded for the lap changes so this might change in the future but anyway this is six and a half seconds slower than what i did and it is seven and a half seconds slower than what the actual record for the track is so there is plenty of room for you to do this lap time so let's get in what we want to achieve here i we probably need to start with a few words about the mercedes and you have to first say that this car does exist for a while pretty much un changed it's very successful in real life it's chosen by a lot of teams because it's reliable good to drive and whatever other factors the teams are considering probably price which for us luckily in the sim doesn't really matter what are the key traits of the car it has a image of being under steery but honestly during the driving for this um, data pack here and for this video i didn't really find the car under steery it rather has a very steady way of rotating through the corner it is very responsive to the brakes though so we'll see that in the data that we're also going to look at and which is kind of accompanying this video the data pack will be available for free for everybody trying to get the license so go to the website popometer.io register and you'll automatically have this data pack in your newly created account and then you can easily compare download the recorder that we are having links everywhere really and then you can just record your lap while driving, compare it to this one, and it should make, should make it a big time easier to achieve the license because it's much easier to see what you're actually doing different, which is sometimes hard to see when you're just driving around. So the Mercedes then is a rather stable car. It does rotate nicely and steadily, and it is very responsive to brakes, which is important because there are other cars that are not. So in the Mercedes, the brake becomes a very useful tool to control what the car is doing, where it is driving. And I would even take it that far that the brake is the more important input method than your steering wheel to control where the car is actually going. And this is already a bit of a yeah shift of thinking, so to say, that you want to do but we'll get there once we go for the corners the other thing is the core the car has that huge and huge engine that we all know has plenty of torque so we need to be a little careful with the throttle we can't be as aggressive as with other cars but that also means we have a huge range available in the throttle pedal to actually control what the car does which is something in other cars is much more tricky to do so the mercedes there offers a good amount of options let's actually go forward to the first corner and figure out what we need to do there shifting point is around 6.8 definitely below 7000 rpm but you will see once the last leds in the middle of the dash dash flash they are coming from the outside towards the middle here in this car once they flash that's the latest you want to shift and i think these are purple we're going to see uh, after the next turn the lighting is a bit weird here on the server right now making the leds hard to see we are approaching turn one and you're going to see a board on the left but you are also seeing the idea line starting to be more dark where the rubber is laid down and when you approach this corner you can probably see it a little better from above there is going to be a bit of a light patch here so you're coming then it gets dark in the idea line then it gets a bit light here and then it gets darker again and actually while driving towards the corner you can really see this brighter patch 
come towards you so let's roll it forward a bit the id line now gets darker and then there's this bright patch here and that actually serves as a very nice breaking marker you could easily take the 100 meter board as a marker but you can see i'm fully committed to the break already way before the 100 meter board so it doesn't really work as a marker unless you find a nice way to behave towards it perhaps something additional i just saw is on the left side here where for whatever reason the 100 meter board on the side is a bit earlier than the whatever ad board there is on the ground so it's a bit tricky i would try to focus on where the bright patch is on the track that works very well for me then on Hungaroring, we have a bit of a specialty that all the corners are really long and we'll always have a huge amount of trail breaking the first corner is not as extreme as others might be what i want you just to look out for now and when you compare later yourself all we always want to do is kind of take the breaking apart into from where you're hitting 100 breaking to when i am stopping the 100 breaking and when i'm actually off the break and in this corner you can see that roughly two-thirds of the braking zone are just hard committing to the brake and one-third of the braking is going to be the trail braking during which more or less the, also the steering is going to reach the maximum amount here even though the steering starts a bit earlier so let's this is pretty much where i start to turn in so something like halfway through the braking zone maybe even a little earlier i start turning on the wheel but not too much because as long as you're fully committed to the brake like i am here the car is not going to be able to convert a lot of steering input and you'll notice that only once you start easing off on the brake so pretty much here you can start committing to more steering input which the car will then be able to convert as well and as you decrease the braking just with that you increase the steering more and more of course this is not a one-to-one -one connection between the two but more or less this is the pattern that you want to achieve other important things that you want to watch out here is those two markers that tell you a lot about what you need to do in this corner the blue marker tells you where the car is the slowest in the corner and the purple marker tells you where the car is the tightest in the corner so if we go really really close down here you can see that at the blue marker the acceleration kind of is starting again the slowing down phase has ended and then the the purple marker or the pink marker appears afterwards where we are actually the tightest in the corner that means when we are slowing down we are not yet going right for the apex the apex appears after we have completely slowed down and we are already accelerating again and this sequence of slowest point and apex tightest point in the corner this is really important for you to remember and check in every corner how i'm doing it or if you compare to other people how other pros are doing it because it tells you a lot about what you need to do in terms of driving slow down until something what is that the middle of the corner slightly before the middle of the corner but ultimately be the tightest slightly after the middle of the corner that is very key here on throttle then we can initially be quite aggressive here the traction control is going to save you with enough power the rear is easily going to rotate around the turn and then there is the phase where we are opening the steering wheel here you can see the trace nicely in the data here as the steering wheel opens up more and more and more we still have to wait a bit with the throttle application until the steering is small enough and we can put power down entirely not overwhelming the car so if we look at this actually in the replay i'll make it half speed because it's easier to see staying straight for a long time doing the turn in with full brake press then starting the trailing increasing the steering further clip the curb ever so slightly and then a tiny waiting phase on the power there you can run wide here on the exit but it is better to yeah kind of just stay shy from the green curbs here on the exit they're a bit slippery and also you're just like driving a much longer distance towards the next corner and i feel the the optimal is kind of to just use a bit of the curb but not too 
much in this instance. Then as we go for the next turn, just notice the shift points in second gear. We will be completely fine refing a tiny bit longer until we kind of have the, the mental capacity again to care for the upshifts because we're still struggling with the car here. And then we're shifting. Well, I was a bit late here, but the next gear I have more time and we can focus more on the shift point. So just about going to 7,000 there. A very good thing about the Mercedes in addition to that is that it has so much torque across the entire range of the RPM that you don't need to shift as much as in other cars. And while other cars perhaps might use first gear, if we zoom out looking at the entire lab, you will see the lowest gear we're actually using is the second one here. We are never going down the first. Bit of a Mercedes specialty down to the first gear. The car is really aggressive. The throttle blip is never really large enough and it can really change the car behavior. Sometimes it locks the rear, sometimes it, the, the throttle kick is a bit too much. And then the car understeers a bit into the corner. So going down the first gear, always a bit of a unpredictable thing in the Mercedes and you need to get the timing really perfect. Luckily, no corner on this track is tight enough that we really need the first gear. So you're safe just staying in second gear as the lowest one in pretty much every corner. And also the throttle application in second gear is much easier to do because the first gear really is aggressive. So much torque available that is hard to handle. And in second gear, the car gets a whole lot smoother. So make sure you only go down the second and that should be it. Shift before the 7000 RPM mark. And that's everything you need to know about the gears here, really. Braking for the second turn then will be... So, well, the marker is the curb, but perspective-wise, we're waiting a bit with the brake application until the curb kind of disappears under the bonnet, right? So now it disappears from view, and then we hit the brake. And the different thing here compared to the first corner is, and that is really interesting, you can see the turn in is already happening right from the start of the braking zone. You're never really braking in a straight line like we did in turn one. You're immediately going for the inside of the turn quite early here. And it really depends how you hit the corner. Um, many ways to do this corner actually fine. Sometimes the tool will find a second apex where you're really tight early on here. In this instance, this lap, I managed to be too far away from the inside curb. I think we have a threshold of a meter and a bit or so until the, uh, the tool would recognize uh, apex towards the inside line. So this doesn't happen here, which means I only have one very late apex. And that very late apex here is important because we need to reposition for that corner here. And this is why in the section we are actually thinking a little backwards. We need to be flat out. As you can see, we need to be flat out through the section here because we have quite a bit of straight afterwards. And on the straight is where we don't want to lose time. So we're thinking from let's be fast on the straight. How do we get there by taking this corner flat out? And how do we get to take this corner flat out? And that the key here is to be on the very left or very far on the left or far enough on the left to actually do that. So we need to make a compromise here out of this long left-hander and not really go wide on exit of this corner because then if you go really wide you'll have a hard time swinging back to the left side and get a turn into the right which again should be flat so whenever you notice you're not taking this right-hander here flat out you need to change something in this corner before here right now what do we do now again we're making the separation of the braking phase and now you can see we're reaching 100 here and then the trail braking starts much earlier than in all the other turns before where we have both well, not even half of the braking zone that is 100% braking now. It seems more like 40% of the braking is very aggressive and then 60% of the braking zone already is trail braking quite deep into the corner. So we're hitting it just kind of going over the curb on the right. 100% braking, immediate tiny bit of turn in to bring the car in a direction towards the inside. It must feel like something you're doing a diagonal braking line here. This is almost straight with very little turning happening. So we're flicking the car to the inside a bit 
for the initial harsh braking and then you can see again the steering angle increases as the brake decreases and we're reaching the maximum steering angle while we are off the brake or, or once we are off the brake then onto the throttle need to again go something 70 80 degree where we really have the power available you can probably get away with 50 60 or so but don't go lower than that because then we get issues with not enough power output on the car and the car will start understeering quite heavily so make sure your initial throttle input is harsh enough to activate the rear so to say to really keep the car rotating and then only manage the throttle in the last 30 40 percent here which will give you a lot of control over how much the car is rotating and of course start decreasing the steering input as you hit the throttle there but i think this will come naturally line wise in the corner i said we can have a double apex approach or just a single late apex the only important thing really is this late apex Again, looking at the markers here, the most telling stuff is that pretty much right in the middle of the corner is where the slowing down phase stops, where we reach the minimum speed in the corner. We'll never be slower than that. And from here, we accelerate until here we decelerate. Decelerating can also mean just coasting, where there's no input on, on any pedal. But since the latest patch or already since 1.9 we really want to reduce the coasting phase to a minimum because the car really becomes kind of understeery there and we're going to lose lap time from not rotating the car further as a driver now you really need to stay active on either pedal but that doesn't mean that you should just because you're braking and maybe your braking stops earlier or so here perhaps that you should just be back on the throttle because that's not going to work the important part is to be able to start accelerating right it's the purpose is not to be on the throttle the purpose is to accelerate and when you're really done early here with with a slowing down because you're braking too early just taking your time to adapt that's normal if you're back on power here then you'll get a lot of trouble on the exit so the key is you need to be in a position to actually pick up the speed again and that only really works once you're past the halfway point of the corner so make sure you keep your speed alive until the middle of the turn and then you can give it the throttle kick and actually start accelerating and the more you accelerate the more rotation you are going to get from the mercedes which then allows you to keep the car well pretty much middle of the track and pull it back to the inside for repositioning for the right hander there so if we look at that in the car actually it is going to look something like this hot on the brake initially right a flick on the steering wheel that we can already see here and then the trail braking starts deeper into the turn we go a little wide here and then when the speed has come down the car comes back to the inside a bit of a throttle kick to keep the rotation alive bring it over to the left and then it in uh, slow motion it's even it's a bit hard to see but the key here is this transition from turning left to turning right. This one needs to be aggressive. The car has a kind of unfavorable weight bias with the engine in the front. So you really need to convince it to change direction at high speeds. And this is why in this situation you want to be aggressive in the steering wheel to get a good reaction of the car to actually change direction. You will feel that once you are slow in the steering wheel from one side to the other, you are unlikely going to make this corner. And the faster you are with the steering, the more likely you're going to be able to take the corner flat out. And the reason is because the, the faster the car goes, the more throttle is applied, the more stable it becomes. And here we have a speed of 140 roughly where downforce already starts playing a bigger role. And with full throttle applied, we have a locked differential, which just means the rear tires are not allowed to spin independently, which makes it hard for the car to rotate you don't have to understand more at this point so just make sure that in this direction change you're aggressive in the steering wheel meaning you are quick not not going too far just meaning you are quick from one side to the other and you'll get a good response from the car going to the right here the mercedes is very tolerant you can choose to not take the curb or you can take it entirely in this case i just take it a tiny bit but you can easily go all the way up to the concrete here the car is going to bounce a bit but it will easily stay on track the fastest way is to not bounce but for you 
aiming for lap time six seven seconds off the pace this should not matter we just want you to get flat out through that corner so if you cut a little more that is fine on the exit the track limits are wide so we want to use them because the less we steer the more speed the car is going to build if you force the car around the corner with too much steering angle the front tires scrub away the speed make it hard for the car to accelerate so we want to let the car run wide and the track limit as you can see it is not the white line on the tarmac it is actually the white line behind the red wide curb and well i was really close to that here let's say it that way i was my tie was still hovering on the track okay <laughs> so this this thicker white line behind the red white curb that is the actual track limit now we are coming to the first kind of fast corner on the track which is a bit more tricky to do because the faster we go the higher of a roll aerodynamics do play so we're just going to make a really quick introduction to you how this works generally speaking the height of the car above the ground defines the downforce levels and we are separating between the rear and the front of the car we are setting the car up usually with the front closer to the ground than the rear because that shifts the aero balance forward produces more downforce overall the problem is that once we hit the brake we kind of get an extra effect which means when we hit the brake the front of the car compresses goes down and the rear of the car goes up which means this gap is going to become smaller this gap is doing, going to become bigger and that changes the aerodynamic balance of the car and in case of the mercedes it really shifts the aerodynamic balance forward which means we get a huge plus and downforce on the front and we do get quite a bit of a minus in downforce on the rear which means if just figuratively speaking the downforce was kind of sitting here both uh, level on on both axes it's definitely going to move forward under braking giving the front end quite a bit more grip and the rear end quite a bit less grip, which is a short phase where the car is sensitive. So how do we deal with that as a driver? And again, the data is our best friend here to really show that. And we are approaching this corner here. So let's zoom a little bit on that. And you'll see the initial braking is going to be harsh, but short. Then a very short trail braking phase and way before we go towards the curb, we are done with the braking and also doing the initial harsh braking here. There's only very little steering input. This is what is that 10, 15 degrees. So really not a lot because with the nose down towards the ground and the rear up slightly in the air, again, exaggerating here, the car is going to be very sensitive. So if we steer a lot in this situation, we are going to lose the rear. Um, so be careful in that short phase here and only start committing to the steering once you are actually off the brake for those making the license right this is this is a quick lap here that i'm showing you there is no need for you to break that late you can easily and that's going to make a ton of a difference already if you just break five meters earlier here or something or 10 that's that's a huge difference and you can get around all the tricky behavior of the car if you just brake a tiny bit earlier hit the brake harsh once maybe let me let me just paint it here if i could uh, find my my pencil so just do something like this here go to the 100 be done here and then you have way more gap for the car to settle before you actually have to steer and the car is back with more neutral aerodynamic balance that way so don't shy away from that you're not trying to break the world record you're just trying to get your license now so no need to push to the very limit as i'm well doing more or less here in this lab i'm just here to explain you how it could be driven and how you can get around the sensitivities of the car the setup is always or already made in a way that it mitigates some of these effects we are not having this effect as pronounced as it could be on a four lap time setup so to say but still that's just how these cars are they are aerodynamically sensitive so you will feel that while driving so this is really the only really difficult section here on the track where we have high speed pitching the car forward a lot where we get the sensitive aerodynamic effect so you can work around that by a not braking as much or braking a tiny bit earlier before you have to steer to 
get around that. So if we roll it forward, this is the tricky part here. You can climb the curb a little, but there's no need to, okay? For lap time, yes, this is going to give something extra. But again, for the license, it's probably not needed to climb the curb because it just has some extra effect on the car. Might pull it a little to the right, might push it a little to the left once you're coming off the curb. And there's no problem whatsoever if you're not braking on the curb. Just put the car next to the curb, put it one, one and a half meters further to the left, ignore that curb fine just make sure you have to break a little earlier than because you're not taking this wide entry then we're going further we can take a lot of this curb here all the way really you can aim for this pole there and i just noticed i haven't really told you what the reference here is but it is really the the start of the curb here that we're looking for when we approach the corner this is when we want to hit the brake and then we're aiming you have plenty of time to really see this this post here coming up in view and you're aiming to kind of just not hit it more or less then you turn in you can take all the curb here the mercedes especially will easily take it the only thing you have to watch out here the track limits on the exit here they are a bit more aggressive this time around i think it is actually the white line it doesn't let you over that a lot before the lap is invalid so make sure you are taking the left hander always slow enough to never go out of bounty because it's done quite easily the way you're taking the curb here you can really see i think if we roll it forward one more time in slow motion you can really see that the car is going for the corner it is rotating now but once you hit the curb it stops rotating there for a bit goes wide a bit it catches itself starts rotating again after the curb but you're losing a few degrees so to say of rotation in this very moment so even if it initially looks like you're making the turn once you jump over the curb on the inside there it pushes the car wide a bit and then you end up in a wider position than you were initially planning so kind of just make sure you plan this into your corner then the next corner looks far away but it is really really close because we're traveling fast and the challenge really is to make the transition as quick as possible as you can and as quick as possible in this case means that we are almost able to break in a straight line for the next corner again because it is similar as turn two and three where we wanted to take turn three flat we're making an aggressive transition and we are having quite the compromise the compromise is not as big here but we still need to keep working the car over to the left side there's really no pause for you so make sure you're bringing the car over to the left aggressively we're really aiming for the poor man there uh, with the flags then transition the car over to the right so we are somewhat in a wide position here again to hit the brake in a comfortable turn in position from a wide line here and we also have the option to drive in a straight line somewhat while braking the very interesting part about this corner is if we go a little further here this is the first time on the track where you will see that i'm never braking 100 percent the reason being that we're never really going fully straight and again we have high speed 160 170 so we get this whole effect again that the car pitches forward the rear gets a bit sensitive and if we're really aggressive on the brake here then many things can happen so it is better to be a bit more easy on the brake and you can see there is no abs engagement here for me whatsoever and this can be a good reference for you when you hear your abs or you hear it very loudly and a lot throughout this braking zone you're probably overdoing it a bit the key is we are transitioning here right so here in the steering you can see we're going from doing a left corner to going a right corner before we are hitting the brake it is very very crucial that you're doing the weight change before you're doing the braking so if we let's change perspective here a little and maybe view this from above a tiny bit roll it backwards a tiny bit so here's we are still doing a left corner a lot of acceleration still okay so when we're doing a left corner the weight let's say this is the center point of weight normally maybe we use a different color because the car is pink let's use blue 
So this is where, let's say, the weight in the car sits in the middle of the car in a normal situation. Now we're doing a left corner, so the weight sits a little more here, but we're also accelerating, so the car actually, uh, sorry, the weight actually sits here, mostly on the rear right corner of the car. So what happens is when we turn to the right, while we would be braking, if we do this in sync, we get the problem that this weight travels to the front left tire kind of directly and the rear left tire never really has the time to build grip. So it can't help you. It can't support you going into this corner. So what we want to do then is not shift the weight diagonally across the car we want to shift the weight first to this side of the car which is what we do by doing the direction change first right i'll show it again in the data this is what happens here this is the yellow bit we are changing direction this is the yellow bit shifting the weight to the other side of the car and then only afterwards we are shifting the weight forward by applying the brakes which now means the rear left tire is able to support you so when you're practicing when you're learning driving sim racing when you're trying to get the license make sure when you're doing the data comparison to also check the sequence of inputs sometimes we'll have a situation where we do the braking before we do the turning or direction change in this case here it's important to do the direction change before we are hitting the brakes just to get this patterns right all right okay then sometimes you'll manage to be in a wider position sometimes you'll not manage the position and you'll be a bit tighter which means there is always some adaptation that you need to do in this corner so make sure you have enough room and never break too late because once you break too late you'll go so far outside of the track that you lose a ton of time Again, one of these near 180 degree corners, and you'll always see the same pattern here. We have the slowest point in the corner somewhere in the middle, which is where we're done slowing down. It also goes uphill a bit. So even if we're on throttle here, we're not actually starting to accelerate until a tiny bit after and the engine really responds. But the slowing down phase, a very gentle slowing down phase quite deep into the corner. Even a bit of a rolling phase here is fine. Just not, don't make it too long. You'll lose a lot of speed if you're rolling for too long. And then you apply the power. But there is something additional happening here, and which is a short shift. Under braking, we're going down from fourth to third to second. That is fine. Gives us a lot of turn in, a lot of engine braking, helps us slow the car down without needing a lot of brake input. So we're losing the speed that we need to lose. But then on power, the second gear is really aggressive because we have quite some speed. The car has quite some torque. So what is happening is, and again, we're looking at the sequence here. You can see I'm just doing the shift to third pretty much in the exact moment I go on to power. And you want to do the upshift ever so slightly, the tiniest possible amount before you go onto the throttle, because going into third gear is going to change the amount of engine braking. So it changes the direction of the car, changes the amount of rotation. You can see this. And what, then you need a lot of power to keep the car rotating but if you do the same input in second gear the car is going to be very nervous we're making use of the car having um, um, a longer gear ratio of course in third gear so it is less sensitive to our input and there's more tolerance for kind of not hitting the perfect amount of throttle but you can also see it needs to be an aggressive 70 80 percent kick or something and then we're holding it there for a bit to see how the car responds and then when the car is stable we are committing fully to the throttle i'm on tc2 here you can go higher if you feel the need to but ideally you work with as low tc as possible because then you can always work a little with the rear end the higher the tc the less you can work with the rear end because the traction control will always take your options away so to say and then we have this late Apex pretty much in the last third, last, last quarter of the corner where we want to be the most inside. And then we open up the steering more and more and more to let the car accelerate in a S strat line as we can possibly achieve in this corner. So let's do it half speed. We're just about to see the transition. Then on the brake, we're neutralizing the steering there just for a tiny amount. A lot of trailing long into the corner. Wait a bit. 
aggressive throttle with a short shift applied keep the car on the inside again on the outside track limits are very tolerant here we can go really wide this time around it's not the white line on the tarmac it's again the white line behind the red and white curb that limits where we need to go and the more of the track you feel comfortable to use there is grip here there's tarmac no weird artificial grass or something so this is fine to use the more runoff you use the more speed you can build the more lap time you are going to find and now comes the entire reason why we have chosen the Merc for this track again the braking marker is going to be just about where the curb starts maybe a few meet is into the curb from the cockpit perspective but if we zoom out and look from the outside the curb hasn't actually started by the time we hit the curb so make sure there's always this kind of discrepancy between where the car is and where it seems to be for the braking then you can climb onto the curb here but you don't have to because the curb is a little more slippery it reduces the braking capacity of the car or rather the grip the front tires will be able to find under the braking but of course the wider turn in is allowing us to carry more speed the important thing here coming for this corner and i'll go to the exact point is that you are done with the braking before we are coming to this curb right you see i'm off the brake as soon as the car is climbing the curb and there should not be a long coasting phase ideally you are right back on the power because what happens is and we'll really need this here as soon as you're done braking the front end will lift up again right so there's less pressure onto the front tires the front lifts up a bit and the important thing here is the ground clearance that we are getting on the front because the curb is high and there's a sausage curb waiting for us additionally if you put the throttle down you kind of just increase that effect the front lifts up a little more we get additional space under the front end of the car which is going to allow us to actually drive across the sausage there it looks pretty flat but if you have a race car sitting at 55 millimeters suddenly it becomes really large so just watching it from here even slower bit back onto the power here and that will just about give us enough ground clearance to fit the splitter over this curb there and then the car is completely unaffected by it if you look at it from above again we can cut the corner quite a bit and i think this is where most people starting with the game will struggle because you're kind of sticking to more natural track limits you're trying to stay on the tarmac but the game allows us to to cut quite a bit here um, i think the the cut threshold is going to be where the red white curb stops this time so pretty much when you put the outside tires onto the concrete that's when you're going to be off track and the same is going to happen for the left hander so you can take a much straighter line here can use much more track than initially thinking probably and this alone is giving you so much lap time that, that the license hopefully becomes a lot easier we also chose the mercedes because it's the car least affected by curbs like that so we can quite easily go over that the just the rate or the chance to hit the curb is much less in the Mercedes than it is, say, in the BMW or the Essen, perhaps, or something. So with the Mercedes, you should have a very smooth experience here and don't worry too much about those curbs. The left-hander then should pretty much be flat, really. Well, maybe not quite. But you can see we are doing the same amount of cutting here way over the white line as close to the concrete as possible and the important bit is that we are on the throttle lifting the front up from the ground to give the car enough clearance on the front to go over this curb with a mercedes you have a few options with a line right it doesn't have to be perfect every lap you can fit the middle of the car over this you can fit kind of off center over the sausage here you can even hit the sausage with the tire it's going to be fine with a mercedes that's why I chose it for this one just make sure you're actually accelerating through these turns and if we look at how it's 
yeah, looking in the data, you can see the breaking initially quite harsh, but then the trail breaking pretty much halfway through the breaking zone, at least 50% of the breaking is already trailing. This might get less the more you adapt to the actual breaking point, but the more you're trail breaking, the more front end you have available for converting steering inputs. And that gives you a lot of control where you place the car. So make sure your trail braking takes up the bigger chunk of your entire braking zone and every every time you turn on the wheel make sure you're not using all the grip just for braking because then the car is not able to respond every time you turn the steering wheel make sure your brake is not applied 100 percent the car will be able to actually go into the direction that you want to point it then you see again very little coasting here applied because we want to be right back on power as we climb the curb. Minimum speed reach before the corner here, pretty much before the curb. And then we're just accelerating through these two turns here. Apex in the middle, not a surprise in such a short corner. Slow speed in that one naturally also before the turn because we are accelerating right through it all the way, cutting a lot there too. Let's move a little further. Make sure this curb is a bit deceiving here. It's wide here, but then it narrows a bit. So make sure you're coming quickly back onto where you can be. Don't be lazy there. Always reposition. And now we are having a very connected and interesting section. Again, we have good speed here, a little over 160. And the next corner is not that much slower really which gives us only a very short deceleration phase so we're breaking rather late into the turn and this time around it's a bit more tricky and i told you earlier that the turn in and the braking usually come separated in this turn again it is pretty much in sync right there's just about a little bit of turn and happening and right after a dash on the brake but not too much if you hit the brake 100 percent here you're a going to lose too much speed you're also pitching the car forward too much perhaps you're triggering a lot of abs and you will not really be in control over where you place the car in the corner so less is kind of more here Make sure you're not braking too harshly. Only a little dash on the brake there. And then the rest can be very low level trail braking to correct your position further. Bring the speed down a little and the car will do a tighter line. You really need to be gentle with the Mercedes here. It teaches you to be subtle with your inputs because the Mercedes is really converting every input that you do. And the brake is a much bigger means of placing the car rotating the car then then the steering wheel really i might exaggerate this here right just to make the point but be sure the brake is really important input method to decide and to control where the car is going so make sure you are using it subtly and the thing is if you're very blunt on the brake if you're only 100 percent or zero percent then you're never never getting across the entire variety of potential car behaviors that the Mercedes can have. So be gentle with your brakes here and you'll have very little problems getting the feedback from the car, how it responds to these inputs, how it starts rotating, how it stops rotating, how it loses speed, how it repositions. Make sure you are gentle. And then you will have very little problems attacking these curbs here. The car is very nice over them it doesn't really um react too much to the curbs doesn't suddenly start rotating doesn't suddenly start understeering it really just eats them and just watch the steering angle here we're also staying in third gear we don't really need to shift down because in second gear again we get a bit of too much engine braking which loses us too much speed and also makes the power application after the turn a bit more tricky so we're staying in third lower rpm enough torque available but easier to manage all the effects in the car are a bit muted if we use the higher gear and the mercedes really allows that try to stay tight because the next corner is really quickly coming so where i'm ending up is just about middle of the track here don't go all the way to to the outside here you'll have no time to reposition and the next corner is more important because afterwards we'll have an exit 
from where we're going to be flat out for a good amount of time pretty much until here so in order to gain time or rather not lose time here we need to make sure we can actually drive flat full throttle for and yeah well early right as early as possible is a bit of a cliche to say so i'm not going to do that but the key is to carry speed onto that straight here, which forces us to do the right compromises, which is to take a wide turn in from the left-hander here, which when we want to do that, we can't go too wide through the left-hander because then we don't have time to reposition. The other thing is, again, make sure where the weight transfer is happening, same pattern as in corner four or five, where we are doing the weight transfer from one side to the other in terms of steering before we're hitting the brake. And then again, the brake input can be really, really low. We only have to lose a few kilometers from 130 something to 100, what's it going to be, 13 or something. So not too much. A tiny tap on the brake, very low level is enough to bring the speed down to get the car to the inside here. So slowing it down, there's the weight change from one side to the other. And only afterwards, the braking is happening when we have already changed direction, just a very subtle amount of braking to bring the car further to the inside. And then while we clip the curb, the throttle is not allowed to be 100%. Basically, when you go 100% throttle, the inside wheel is going to spin up. Then it sooner or later will transfer less excess energy to the outside wheel and that will cause snap oversteer. So as long as you're riding the inside curb, make sure your throttle looks something like this the initial kick here to create the rotation but then we're going back to manage this is 70 percent in this case might as well be 75 or 65 or whatever don't take these numbers literally this is going to look different in my next lap as well just make sure that while the inside of the car is on the curb you're a bit easy on the throttle here you're not asking something but not too much as that will create instability then once you're off the curb you can probably quite easily put the power down and the track limits on the exit they again allow for yeah quite a bit here way above the white line there we can go right to the next thicker white line behind the red white curb and now very very important that you when you got these corners done do not get lazy okay you might be happy you want to breathe but do not stop repositioning the car because the next corner is coming very fast and try to again do the same thing reposition over to the side now we got to be quick with the turn in to the left hander again and it can really help clipping the curb on the inside this time around because it creates additional rotation for the car which makes it easier to pin the car to the left where we need to be for the braking for the next turn again to get a good turn in there so you can see now we have the third and we have the fourth corner who are all which are all depending on one another and you're setting the last corner up really already how you enter the first corner of the section so make sure you're doing the right compromises and always focus on corner exits over corner entries so to say and that will allow you throughout the entire section to always have time to reposition the car and be in good in a good spot on the track to actually do the turn-ins but we'll need to dissect this a little bit more let's zoom into this last bit here first what we're going to see here this change of direction is happening quite early again we want to be quick here from going through a right turn into going through a left turn just make sure you're changing direction quickly which again is kind of trying to on purpose upset the car a little make it rotate you got to be quick there and then try to clip the inside curb which is going to provide you some extra rotation pull the car to the inside allowing you a better position for the braking because there is virtually no time to get the car straightened up you'll see here we're still fully committed to the steering by the time we have to hit the brake again and now we have the problem that the car is high speed a lot of aerodynamics are playing a role now so the car is sensitive to pitch and now you're seeing that the transition from one side to the other in the steering is kind of happening in sync with the brake input so this is a sensitive state because we're shifting the weight diagonally across the car let me go back to this 
real quick. It is right here. So to the left, and just now the turning to the right has started. So the weight is kind of coming from this corner of the car to this corner of the car without really giving this tire a lot of time to build the grip. So this means the car is sensitive. And that means we have to be cautious with our brake input here. And that's why you're not seeing me just slam the brake to 100% because that would be too much. And you'll also see the change in direction is going to be followed by a bit of a pause in steering here, where I just wait for the car to settle. Once I come out of the brake, the car is going to settle down with the rear end a bit, provide the outside, rear tire some grip, and then we can commit to the turn here. So when you learn this track, make sure you are doing the right compromises. I can't emphasize this enough. The compromises are important. This corner starts here. Okay, with your gentle braking, slowing down enough to keep it tight through the left-hander. And then you're repositioning for the right. Then you get a good exit here. Then you have time to reposition here. Then you have time to clip the curb. And then you still have time to somewhat get in a position for the last turn in here without being overwhelmed with the braking. If you go wide there, right here, you have no time to get in a position for braking and then you're going to lose Huge amounts of time through the right-hander. Huge. Half a second, full second, no problem. Very easily gone. Make sure you get into this wide position again for the turn-in and then be gentle on the brake. Don't just slam it, right? It's not an on-off pedal. It's not a button. It's an axis. Use it. Then the Mercedes again. Once you're off the brake, it's going to be pretty neutral. And you can commit to that corner. You can coast a bit. The car is not going to overwhelm you. Once you feel the car is coming towards the curb, this is your sign to put the power down. You can go up to the concrete here. Failed it this time around, but you can use everything the curb is offering. Even the grass is fine in the Mercedes. We just want to get to you around the track. Then on the exit, again, the track limit is pretty much where the red-white curb ends. There's no line. There's just the green-white curb that starts. But the white line on the tarmac, you can kind of safely ignore and go a little further than that. Apex-wise, last thing I'm going to show for this corner, I think is where you want to be the inside. I would say the middle of the turn is slightly before somewhere here so we always or we again have some sort of apex that is late meaning it is after the middle of the turn um, just as a rough reference for you where you want to be on the inside there and that opens up the exit makes it easier to stay within the track limits three corners to go one is very traditional very normal we're coming from a little over 200 your braking marker is going to be not where the ideal line starts going darker but where the curb starts and i recommend not climbing onto the curb because again it offers quite a bit less grip and might make your turn in inconsistent so just stay away from that go as close as you as you feel comfortable but that's going to give you the more consistent uh, lap times around here initial braking is going to be pretty hard and let's say roughly a third of the braking is going to be the trailing phase where the steering angle increases and ultimately reaches its maximum with no next to zero brake input there. Curb wise, you can take quite a bit. The car can easily handle it. You can additionally stabilize the car on the curb with a bit of throttle, as I do here. Just make sure you're not slamming the throttle when you go onto the curb because the inside tire will spin up again sooner or later, transfer to the outside tire, and then you get the snap oversteer. So make sure once you're on the curb, just to kind of 50, 60% throttle to stabilize. Wait a bit for the car to come off the curb and then you can commit to the throttle again. On the exit, learning, understanding, feeling the track limit again is crucial. It's not the white line on Tarmic. Again, it's the white line behind the red white curb. And now a bit more time than in the other corners, but still make sure you reposition early so that your braking zone gets straight. Okay, that is really important. If you are lazy here, you're going to break in a diagonal line more towards the outside of the track, something like this. And that just means you have kind of extra degrees of, of turn in to do that you don't necessarily 
want to do and it's just more work more uncomfortable so make sure you transition early enough so you can break in a straight line again that breaking is a bit different again we have a very long corner not a 90 degree corner again 180 degrees and the longer the corner is the slower the corner is compared to the speed you carry approaching the braking, the more likely we'll have some sort of double apex approach. The tool doesn't recognize any because I was never under the threshold, but essentially the idea in this corner is to be tight once, be a little wide once, and be tight for a second time. So there's apex one, there's apex two, and that is the widest point in the corner, which usually falls in line with the slowest point in the corner, which is indicated by the blue marker here. So pretty much the corner is divided into two by the blue marker, maybe slightly before the middle of the turn. And then we're starting with a, that aggressive throttle kick again to get the rear to step out a little, start rotating, and then we're managing this rotation. Right, and there's a very long time that I take to go onto the power fully until I can really start opening up the steering wheel here. And then we can apply full throttle. As long as the car is rotating, as long as we are doing the corner, 100% throttle is just not gonna work. It's overwhelming the car and you'll initially get understeering followed by snap oversteer. Make sure you get a good feeling on your brake. This is really important for your entire sim racing, but for this track in ACC in particular. Here it's easily two thirds, maybe 80% of the braking zone that is trail braking and it's on a very low level to get the speed down until the middle of the turn. This is pretty much how long you have time to get the speed down. Your braking zone is not just a straight bit before the turn, it's halfway into the corner where you eventually want to, want to stop slowing down. So with this view from here, half speed, trail braking is starting now. Still slowing down, so still slowing down, going wider. Now the car comes back to the inside and then we're kind of assisting that with the initial throttle kick to start the rotation of the car. Now we need some patience here until we can judge whether or not we're going to make the exit easily. And again, very little time to reposition. You always have to work the car. This is really a hundred and whatever seconds on this track that you need to keep working the car. There is no pause except the start finish straight. You always need to work yourself in a better position. And then again, we want to somewhat break in a straight diagonal line with the outside of the car already loaded. So this is what we're going to see. I'll actually have to go back further in the data a little. Here we have to transition from one side to the other, right? We're steering left still. Now we're starting to steer right. We're loading the outside of the car. Both outside tires have grip now, front and rear. And then we are going for braking of the last corner where I think the pattern you'll see is the same. We're slowing down until the middle of the turn. We have a bit of a first apex here where we're tight. Then we're going wider, wider, wider until we reach the minimum speed. And then we're pulling the car back to the inside with again going 70, 80% throttle where the rear starts rotating. And then you sit there and wait until you can see the exit of the turn and conceal the outside uh, curb there. And you can, or you feel free to open up the steering wheel there. Brake markers, I think I forgot the corner before. Let's roll it back a little. Just see it here. It's a bit tricky. Maybe you can see this patch on the outside there where it gets a bit dusty. Perhaps you can't. I see something there, which is a change in the track surface. It feels like the track is going a little over. It's, it's difficult to paint, but the track is flat here. Then it has a bit of a bump here and then it goes flat there again. And somewhere here, you can see the change in elevation. Maybe we can see it better from the outside. I'm going to exaggerate this a bit, but I think once you drive, you'll notice it. The track goes down here a little and here it goes up a little. And then this is, well, this is not a good painting. Let's try one more time. Here it goes up a little. And then it's just kind of after this elevation change, so to say. After that, we want to hit the brake. It's very subtle in the car, but uh, I can at least reliably see it. So let's roll the uh, backwards a little so you can see the approach to the turn. And watch for this elevation change. 
and then just after that elevation change once you're going into the dip so to say this is when you put the brake on in that corner then here after the weight change the car is going to be settled braking very crucial here again the car is already at its limit somewhat if you just hit 100 percent, it's going to be tricky so make sure your entire braking zone in this one is trail braking don't be too aggressive and then you'll be in charge of the car if you just hit 100 percent, it's going to get loose if you leave it a bit more room you'll stay in charge you can play with the car and the more you commit to the steering the less you can commit to the brake this time around here you can really see this nicely onto the power again that 80 percent kick and then the rotation will stay alive and then you can easily pin it to the inside on the exit again track limit's going to be the white white line not the not the one on the tarmac this seems to be the pattern around the entire track and just using the track limits alone is going to make such a big difference breaking for the last turn maybe one final thing we want to see let's see where it actually happens the reference for me yeah it could be the white line of the pit maybe just just shy of that a little could be a good reference and then you're basically aiming to get the car over here go wide in the turn and come back to the inside later but this is uh, a bad painting just don't hit the cone that would be too tight I'll now shut up and give you the full lab from the start and then head over to popomato.io to get the data comparison and the setup for free. Leave a like, subscribe and good luck with your license run.